Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are talking about chapter one as of now and we are continuing ahead with different set of questions. The chapter one is Agile Software Development and we have seen nine questions so far and it's time for us to see another few questions from this chapter and then we'll move on to the next segment uh, in the new tutorial. So the question for the day, uh, the first one we have is uh, question number 10. It talks about why is it important for a team to implement only a few improvements in an iteration. Now, that's a little tricky question, you know, sometimes you can be defined with anything what they might be looking at. And uh, it's, it's certainly uh, from the importance of that. Did you really get the context? Did you really get the importance of any topic, uh, not just what is written there? not just what it is all about. You should also know why is it being conducted, why it is important for a team, for a process to be conducted. And that's what these type of questions are basically relevant to. So why is it important for a team to implement only a few improvements in an iteration? Now here they're just talking about considering some of the changes, not everything, and uh, within a particular sprint. So let's have a look on the option because we cannot get the context uh, in such type of questions and for that you have to be through the options which basically tells you what exactly is being asked here. So we have option A, it says if the team tries to implement too many improvements, they may feel defeated and lose motivation. Um, certainly makes sense because if you are overburdened with a lot of changes, they may feel, because it's not a new feature, right? Overburdening and giving you a lot of work uh, is totally different than working on <clears throat> multiple changes because the more we work on the changes we may feel that the work what we are doing is not up to the mark or we may feel demotivated which is certainly not a good thing for the team so few changes certainly makes it feel like you're you know a human can go wrong but multiple at the same time could probably remind you that you did not do anything good about your work so a is not something which we can talk about like if the team tries to implement too many improvements, they may feel defeated and lose motivation. Uh, that's one tricky. Let's see how exactly it goes. B, if the team tries to implement too many improvements, it may disrupt their ability to produce at a sustainable pace. That's, I think, something more relevant because, uh, again, now if you have contradicting options, you need to pick up the one which talks about the best point, which are not something about emotional, not something about personal, but something related to the process and the goals of testing. Or sometimes even when you talk about uh, the context of a methodology has to be taken into account. So B is talking much better option than the first one, because there we felt that, okay, if you're doing too many changes, you may feel demotivated. That's true in one way, but I don't care about your personal feeling sometime when it comes to deliverables, right? So if I'm not working on any new features and only working on changes, I don't have any goal for that particular sprint. I may not have sustainable development at the end of the sprint and I may not have any kind of increment done by the end of the sprint. So B looks more interesting compared to A in that sense. C, if the team tries to implement too many improvements, it may set a management expectation of radical changes with each iteration. Now, it's not, it's not something which is a valid point, but still, one way it can be positive, It sorry, not positive, it can be possible that uh, the management can start thinking about that, hey, you are used to these kind of things and you are not up to the mark and the team is unable to perform what they are supposed to do. So it is possible, but not better than the option B. Uh, D, if the team tries to implement too many improvements, they may lose sight of definition of done. Um, possible. If you really keep involving, you know, fixing the issues rather than thinking of the new items, then it may be possible that you can get deviated from your aim and goal. So you may not really take care anymore about what is the definition of done because you're just busy fixing the issues within things. So we take a limited amount of changes and at the same time, we also work on new things because every single sprint we must increment and have some sustainable development. So in that context put together, the right answer here is B, if the team tries to implement too many improvements, it may disrupt their ability to produce at a sustainable pace. 
All right, let's look at the next one. We have the question number 11 and it says in a retrospective meeting, who should provide input into testing activities on the project? Now, testing activities, inputs during retrospective, three things which we have to be worried about. In a retrospective meeting, that means a retrospective is going on, who should provide inputs into the testing activities on the project? So the options are very straightforward, only the developers, only the testers, everyone but the tester, uh, like anyone who is a tester can provide that. Uh, and the D option, everyone of, on the team. That means everyone in the team. So in that context, uh, we are, I think, very, very clear. Retrospective is not an individual assessment. And indeed, it's not about somebody's personal perception. Uh, we always work as a team. Uh, throughout the session, throughout the syllabus, we only spoke about one thing that it's a whole team approach, given that you're working together. It's not a one person responsibility to comment on anything. And when it comes to the process and the activities, so anyone, including testers, developers, architects, anyone can go ahead and, you know, share their thoughts about or inputs about the testing activities. If they think things are going good, they can share. If they think something should improve, they can go and talk about it. So it's not limited to just one person in the team, be it anyone. So the right answer here is D, everyone in the team is responsible to contribute to any aspects of the process, including testing. So testers alone are not responsible for quality. It's everybody's responsibility. Then even contributing to the testing activities and their pros and cons can be discussed by anyone in the team. Moving on to the next question, we have the question number 12 and it says what types of automated testing activities are included in the continuous integration process. I'm not sure how far you really remember all the bullet points from there, but some of the common candidates of uh, automation in CI is static analysis, compilation of the code, then unit test, integration, etc. Right. So the major attributes included is, uh, you know, the static analysis and uh, we do have the compilation of the code, we do have unit testing and integration, and then you can also have a bind of regression together. But anyways, given that like the basic outline says these are some of the things which you can really have as a part of automated activities within the continuous integration pipeline. And let's look at the option. I think uh, options are pretty interesting. We have unit only, unit and regression testing, unit and integration, unit integration and system. System are supposed to be done outside the pipelines because we cannot just embed a lot of effort right at the unit when it is checked in. So we don't really recommend that every time a code is checked in, uh, system testing should also be triggered. Regression as it you know grows in the size over a period of time, it uh, is an optional thing which can be added, but not recommended like you know blindly that it should be included or strongly recommended and so. So in that context, uh, as I told you, the four different options, what we generally look forward to automate uh, as a part of our pipeline, we say unit only or, you know, sorry, we say static analysis, we talk about compilation, unit and integration. In that context, the right, ans right answer here is C, given the options here, unit and integrations are the good candidate uh, to be included as a part of continuous integration process. So put together, I think we had a very good understanding of some of these questions which are totally away from our common thinking and intuitions of this particular examinations. And uh, we shall look forward to add some more questions like this to our conversation. And we have a lot of questions remaining from this particular set B. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.